Are you okay? Am I going too fast? This is the 25. This is 25 year old. Um, and look, once you're in 25 year old, you're in territory that's very unpredictable. It's, it's all. I have to say, it's almost impossible to to have one batch repeating uh, with the, the previous batch. You, you have to hope that you're in the you're in the right territory. Um, the makeup the makeup of this particular uh, uh, expression is a little bit different, and it's essentially and mostly. Um, PX uh, casks that have uh, contributed to, the, to this with some uh, fresh American casks and some virgin oak. So the sherry presence is going to be less dominating. You're going to get uh, certainly orchard fruit, you're going to get uh, pears, apples, I suppose. Um, and it's, with most of the varieties, you're going to get some orange peel. And just this just a hint of eucalyptus, but there's going to be heather honey. You're going to have heather honey, butterscotch vanilla. It's quite strong in here, raisin, sultanas. Um, but it's a great dram. Um, Are you trying to keep the root <coughs> notes a little bit lower in all your expressions than you would expect because there's not too much spiciness in there? Like we, we, we try really hard to make sure that we don't overkill any of the flavours. Um, and we can take our time to do it. But, I mean, uh, the journey is just starting. You know, we're two years into the experience. Uh, hopefully, I mean, uh, my promise to myself when we acquired, I'm 74, 74. My, when we bought the Alfie, I was 72. And kind of my promise to myself was that I will be, I promised my hope to myself was that I would be alive when a first 12 year old from our own production came to the market. So are you listening? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> you said yourself you took a lot of the, the brand new people to your new distillery, including your wonderful visitor, Santa Maria. Yes, terrific. Except for Crazy Stu, that you, I think he's still with the Van Rieck. Did the four round oh, listen, listen, uh, listen. ever approach you uh, after you took so many of the, uh, the people? No, no, here? listen, MD, MD that we employed, we, we told them they're interested in coming and do you have any objections? And the bottom line is that if people don't want to work for you, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a period of slavery anymore. Um, <laughs> I would have liked, uh, I, I, I would have half liked Stuart to come and join us. But he is bloody difficult to manage. <laughs> I mean, he is, he is crazy. <laughs> he would be very comfortable in the crazy gang. Last year, Alistair told us that in some of your warehouses you also hosted casks from other distilleries, is this right? Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, look, the, there are, there are essentially two businesses running. There's a, there's a branded business based on the distillery and there's a warehouse business. Um, and we have space to store about 100,000 casks. Right now we're storing about 50,000 for Shivers and it's a great source of revenue. Uh, and we, we're hoping that they forget that they're still in the warehouse. <laughs> Any thoughts? This may really have some little this. Beautiful. This one's beautiful. So we're going to look at another four, which is um, a single cask. It's 1989. It's not So this is this one. This one, number four. Number four. Number four. Single cask. Single cask. 53.4. The single cask is a PX punchin, but before that the whiskey had been essentially in fresh American barrels, so there is going to be a significant presence of heather honey in butterscotch. 
the PX is going to the PX is going to give us mocha, dark chocolate, hints of spices, and definitely there will be a touch of orange peel at the end. How old is this color? This is 1990. How old? 1990. <laughs> 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 This is like the Spanish news. Figure it out. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, I will repeat, you do not need water or ice for this. It's amazing how lively it is. Big in the mouth, front, middle and back. Nice delivery. The gentlemen are being very quiet, <laughs> enjoying the experience. <laughs> So, I, I will kind of, I will kind of uh, sow some seeds about a question that, uh, and it was asked of me last night. Um, what what directs us towards choosing a particular cask? And it's not because uh, we look at the very best casks and say these are going into single casks. We look at casks and we, you, you know, we see something that's different or extraordinary for some reason. We think, you know, that would be quite interesting. We should we should put that in bottle and get some kind of response from the consumer. I mean, this is a really good cask, but it's maybe not the best cask. But we, when we were looking at it, we thought this is an interesting cask, and it's worth uh, taking this to the consumer. I hope you think it's okay. I mean, I think it's pretty okay. So, if <laughs> I, I, I kind of in my mind, I don't think there is such a thing. But we, there are casts that we would say that this would be really good in the 25 or the 30 year old. Uh, this is interesting. I, I mean, one of, one of the. I go to the distillery two days a week and I'll look at. I'll take the opportunity to look at about 200 samples. And, you know, nosing them is easy because. The nosing doesn't tell me that uh, this is the best. The nosing tells me what isn't the best. And then we eliminate on the nose, and then we look at the rest on the taste. Um, so uh, you can be sure it's an overnight stay. <laughs> what, what I would be interested in is, I think it's not too hard to find if a cask is good, but how do you determine that it shouldn't stay longer in the cask? Well, I think that's a matter of being being diligent and precious about the wood. I mean, we will look. We will look at casks that are in our Bible. We will look at the cask probably every three months. And in the case where we know that the wood can be can overcook, we will be particularly vigilant looking at these. Um, so we, we we don't we don't isolate these. These casks are not left to linger in the warehouse without being looked at. What actually tells you it's enough now? Taste. Taste. So, you say you always try to bottle single casks when there's something special or good. Good, good and interesting. Good and interesting. So for this particular one, what piqued your interest? What made you say this one needs to be a single cask? 
I think the flavour w- 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 attracted me. It, it had not been uh, it had not been oversherried. It was still sh- showing some of the characteristics of the historical cast that had been used. So it set itself apart. It wasn't good. There's no point in us putting a cask out that's similar to the core range. We've got to make it interesting to you. And it probably, in some ways, this was a little bit undercooked from a sherry point of view. But it had other characteristics that appealed. You occasionally get bonkers cast that you're like, what the heck happened to this cast? And what do you do with it? Well, yeah. This is a really good. This is a really good question. This is a really, really good question. What happens when you screw up with a cast? We 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 took a batch of Tokai casts in um, when I was at Ben Riech, and they should actually have a, a really nice Tokai note. And after about eighteen months, uh, we had followed them, followed them. But after eighteen months, they were like acetone, and they were for the earth. They had to go. They were they were without recovery. Painful. But isn't that happening a lot of times on Tokai? I think it does actually. We should have learned. <laughs> we should have learned from other people's experience. I, I just heard that you know you have tons of Marsala, Madeira, and all kinds of sweet wine, but nobody wants to touch Tokai. Well, I, I, you will definitely not find me using Tokai. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea why it is Tokai? What is different that these cars? They always have a very and, and the peculiar taste is, my suspicion is that, uh, that the casks somehow, in, in advance of us getting them, had been lying too long and to get some water into them. And maybe we were confusing um, uh, acetone with acetic acid. Um, but unquestionably they had, been, uh, they had been fouled. And they didn't foul on the note when we, because every, every one of these high value casks that come in, we know every one of them empty as they arrive. <laughs> So we we had, we had a we we were confident these casts were okay. The truth was they were shit. So it was painful. So you get your casts um, whole, or you get the staffs and rebuild them. No, we 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 get we get them whole. Um, we try to buy directly from the source, but we have a very good relationship with Space Side Cooperage. Um, but we're very, we're very vigilant about casts. We, we won't accept casts without actually qualitatively e- examining their nose. And uh, for example, if we buy wine casks, the deal is that they, ha- they have to be, once, once the wine has been evacuated from the cask, they mustn't be sulfured. They must be burned right away and then shipped to us and we fill them immediately. So the, the whole experience has to be as truncated as possible and as short as possible. So how much time would you say passes from the cars being emptied, shipped to you in the Oh. And the impo- in terms of wine, the, the important dimension to all of that is they mustn't be sulfur. So life's not easy. <laughs> if you inherited some triple distilled uh, casks. Would you try something uh, like that in Glenelg as well? Triple distillation? <laughs> yeah. Actually, if I'm being honest, I, I don't think it worked. I, I think the, the triple distillation spirit was thin <laughs> and thinner. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't think. Uh, I don't think it was bold enough or muscular enough to go into some of the rich casks. I think very quickly the, the wood characteristics overpowered the spirit. It, it wasn't properly balanced. Look, it was a nice experiment and worth trying, um, but I, don't, I really don't think it was a success, and I don't think we would be tempted to do it at... Um, I mean, what we are doing at Gnallachie is making some peated, uh, some peated uh, um, spirit and some very interesting peated spirit where we have taken a very concentrated cut from the bottom of the where the peat the kind of peat characteristic lies in the distillate and uh, it'll be well it, it'll be very intense it'll be interesting <laughs> and that will not fail I can tell you this one will not this is this is a real really interesting uh, ex- experiment that will be a, a huge success but it'll be very limited. <laughs> In 12 years time. You brought some new make? 
I don't. No, we wouldn't just bottle new make. But no, um, no, no, you could. You've lost some new mix with you. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when you're carrying a bag, it's very difficult to put, to put liquid. This is the problem with flying nowadays. You can you can almost count carry anything. But the the uh, it won't this could not go to twelve years. Uh, it will go it will come out in about five years and it will be Listen, it's 18 months and I tell you it's spectacularly drinkable. <laughs> And the great thing about these very, very rich peated products is they can live in very, very rich wood for a much longer period of time. Yes? Well, I think the first thing is that they have to be husband in the way I've just said. Freshly dumped, not sulfured, bunged immediately and shipped and filled immediately. Then you've got a chance of having the best possible experience between the, the whiskey and the, and the wine. Some of them are excellent. And I can tell you, we got some Chateau Mouton casks. Sebastian's probably tasted one. It is, I mean, it's to die for. It's the nectar of the gods. <laughs> and it's 2011, and I, this is ready. Um, the age would suggest not, but this is definitely ready. We get some wonderful Colmsari casks. That are, uh, that are beginning to talk to us very, very encouragingly. Um, Madeira, Madeira is great, but they're very, very difficult to get. No, we we take we no we, we, we you kind of lose the characteristic of the white cask if you dechar and rechar. You might as well just use a. Uh, American Would you like to experiment with different kinds of woods, not just oak? Well, we're not allowed. Yeah. Um, but what we are doing is we're experimenting with uh, different kinds of uh, oak, oak genus. We, we, we've we already looked at the chinkapin, we're looking at uh, Eastern Russian oak. Um, and it's very difficult to work with Russian, with, with Russian oak. It's, uh, it's like Scottish oak, it's short. It's stubborn. It's <laughs> full of knots, and uh, and it it's expensive. And the Coopers hate working with uh, hard, short oak and anything that's got knots in it. They hate it. So we've got a cooperage in Spain who's prepared to take some Russian wood in. And and, uh, and when I was at Ben Rio, we got some Russian. I don't know if you know the winery called Masandra. Um, it's in Crimea. Very nice wine, and it used to be. It was the wine of the, the wine of the Tsars. Um, it was their favourite wine. And I, I, I got some in for uh, Russian oak, of course, but in some Vlasic. And they were coming along beautifully. And they will not be released. They, they will not see the opportunity or bring this to the market, but they were fantastic. And uh, who knows? But we are doing a lot of things with oak. Um, we think there's a real opportunity. I mean, European oak doesn't give you the kind of butterscotchy vanilla notes, it gives you a much more metallic, earthy, uh, tanniny note, um, and that's what we're looking for. We think, uh, we think, for example, Hungarian oak's interesting, Russian oak definitely. We will bring in some Mizanara casks, but they, are, and they cost £3,000 each, it's really, really expensive. And the problem with that is, the consumer has to pay for that, you know, that would add something like, £3,000 a cask would add something like, Twelve pounds a bottle. Twelve pounds. But it's worth looking at. You know, it's uh, we have to be cutting edge to be creative where the big boys are going at it in big volume. You okay? I mean, you're not allowed to use other cars than no, But would you be theoretically allowed to use chips? No. No. No, and, and I really need to make this point to you because there is, there, let me start off by saying there is no shortcut to quality. You can try doing anything you want to do, you can try all the kind of shortcuts, <laughs> chips in the wood. That doesn't enhance maturation. It may give you a greater extract from the wood, but it doesn't speed up oxidation or reduction or esterification. That takes as much time. It, not as a shortcut, but would you be allowed to say use chestnut? No, regrettably not, and it could be very interesting. 
we are not in a position to influence the thinking of the Scotch Whiskey Association. You have to have a conversation with Diageo. <laughs>